Texas. We are a church for all people, and we welcome you as we transform the Memphis culture. The church is located inside Bun Presbyterian Church at 561 South Prescott Street, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Darnell Goose, Jr., Senior Pastor of the Cathedral Praise Church of Memphis Incorporate, and I hope to see you there. Go get tested for HIV AIDS because HIV AIDS has become the third leading cause of death among African Americans between the ages of 25 and 34. Even more surprising is the fact that this disease has become the leading cause of death for African American women between the ages of 25 and 34. The spread of HIV AIDS is the single greatest health crisis currently confronting African Americans. This is the city. This is their story. Some names have been changed and so many lives have been changed too. They're going to give you the facts, just the facts. Some call this a city of crime. When they're done, it's going to be the city that cares a lot. This is the city, Memphis, Tennessee, where fearless, inspired, unfired, hungry rabble of revolutionaries has transformed hearts and minds, not with weapons, but with their own brand of compassion, integrity, and hard work. All they're asking is for you to join their movement. It's easy to join with a donation of $20, $50, or $100. And it's all for the nonprofit organization Relationships Unleashed. With this donation, you will help enhance the three core principles of education, empowerment, and enrichment to the LGBTQ community and its allies. Go to www.relationshipunleashed.com on the World Wide Web, relationshipunleashed.com. All donations are tax deductible. Come on, join the movement. By the way, I don't need a badge or a gun. I carry a microphone, bub. Let's talk about sex, baby. In Memphis, condoms are free from Planned Parenthood and their friends all over town. Nothing sexier than free. So check out freecondomsmemphis.org and get some. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex. Want to talk about sex? Talk about condoms at freecondomsmemphis.org. Get some before you get some. Freecondomsmemphis.org. Let's talk about sex, baby. Dear HIV, I may have gotten you, but you will never, ever get the best of me. I take charge of my health. I take my HIV meds every day. I don't just live with you. I live well with you. HIV treatment works. Get in care. Stay in care. Live well. Choices is a nonprofit sexual health clinic in Midtown Memphis. We accept 10 care and offer patient assistance to help pay for needed services. Choices is proud to provide comprehensive reproductive health services in an LGBTQ affirming environment. We offer a wide range of services such as general wellness, fertility assistance, STI testing and treatment, reproductive health services for people living with HIV, including PrEP and PEP, birth control, Gardasil vaccinations, abortion services, miscarriage carriage management and services for trans and gender non-conforming people, including hormone replacement therapy. Everybody needs choices. You know the night time is the right time to be I'll be with the one you love I'll this is live show on KWAM Nine Talk Radio. The only voice we educate, empower, rich the community. Be with the one you love. And we're broadcasting on uh, KWAM Nine Ninety and FM One Hundred Seven Point Nine. This is the voice, the talk radio for the Mid South. And the T-shirt lab has a new location. It's located on Nine Eighty Six East Brooks Road. You get spring cr- screen printing, embroidery, Are you drunk? and promotional products. Girl. Not yet. You can check out. Check them out. At the tshirtlab.com, or you can place an order at info at tshirtlab.com. Give them a call at 901 207 3043, and you can get 10% off your first order if you tell them the Unleashed Voice Radio Show sent you there. Once again, it's the t shirt lab, 901 207 3043, new location, 986 East Brooks Road. Go and tell Kevin that the Unleashed Voice sent you and you need your 10% off your first order. And we're back. 
back. We back. All right. We're back. We're back. Back. You back. also drinking that punch that uh Sharice had at the program because it was spike. Uh, mm-hmm. not yet. Not yet, baby. I don't, I don't drink no more. Me either. Hallelujah. Bye, 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 bye. And then we back. Okay. Bow tie. So we were talking about uh, someone called in with the pansexuality question. Hopefully we answered that call. But we're going to get back on the um, got, God. got God issue. Also, um, <laughs> the reason why uh, a lot of people hold God from you, uh, uh, because you're so hard on yourself, you expect little and you get little. And so if you live that life and live by that motto, uh, that's going to be your story for the rest of your life. But if you connect with this person who gives you this clarity and this vision and this uh, this crazy faith and this drive and this initiative, you're going to start expecting more. And then when you expect more, you're going to get more. So why should I offer you something like that if I want to keep you down and no press? So that's another. You got to th- think about this stuff. It's deeper than just. I don't want you to believe in God. You're going to hell because you are a, a, a LGBT member or whatever. Mm. No, it's deeper than that. Yeah. If you can't get to God, you can't live the true life that you're supposed to live. Right. You can't get your blessings while you're here on earth that you're supposed to get because you think so little of yourself and you won't even try to do anything to raise yourself up. Right. So I got you if I tell you the creator hates you. And so just imagine if you ever believed in yourself. You know, if people ever, ever, ever believed in themselves, what you could really accomplish if you believe in yourself. Uh, I had a friend that called me today was talking about some, I believe I can do this. I was like, no, if you don't believe it, I'm sure in the hell ain't going to believe it. So <laughs> you got to know you can't do it. So uh, that's another reason people withhold God uh, from you and, um, and everything. So don't let people withhold and, and have that kind of control over your destiny. You know, I, I find it really uh, particularly particularly interesting, especially in the South, mm-hmm. you know, a.k.a. the Bible Belt. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you have these the family, you know, filled with religious fanatics. And I say fanatic in a loving sense, you know, because they reverence and reflect God in the manner that, that suits them. And, uh, you know, it's an oxymoron in, in those types of relationships because uh, the projection of God that they project onto you may not match your experience. <laughs> and you know it that never will. and you know that you know quite well especially when you go out and uh into the world and the things that you were taught and you know uh they try to force their beliefs onto you and it does not match when you go out into the world and start having your own experience absolutely and uh, it often calls like uh people to to be ostracized from their family, rejected by their family, and thus you have the creations of Poles, the gay families, and people taking their kids in because they don't want them and families don't want you at the at gatherings and because you're transgender and you want to come in your authentic self or you are a lesbian and you and your wife want to come or at the funeral they don't, you know, it's just it just goes on and on and on. and It's just sad and it's a disgrace. But I, I believe in the words of, of my good mentor, Oprah Winfrey, uh, sometimes you have to you have to teach treat people how to treat you, and and when you do that, that means that you break ties with them, and uh, you don't have anything to do with them until they learn how to treat you, and that means in a loving sense, in a kind sense, since they they say that they so Christian, but you know that's a that's a whole nother topic on the show. But you know I'm speaking like you know from the book of life. And it, it's, it, it probably for people sound like really cliche-ish, but I, I believe that you have to know God for yourself and you have to have your own relationship with God. And once you begin to have your own relationship with God and God begin to pour into you and let you know that I love you and that you are my child and you were chosen for a special reason and you got a gift. And uh, it's something that indelible that you were sent here to do to fill this gap in the world and in the universe. And I need you to come out with purpose and I need you to do what I sent you here to do. And I believe that, you know, we were all sent here for a particular reason. And uh, this this thing about choice and, uh, you know, uh, you introduce some of those may be true. But for those that are inherently uh, identified with our sexuality, who we are and the essence of who we are. I would never let anybody again, and I say again because it did happen to me, take God from me and hold God hostage and uh, try to hijack my beliefs and my religion into theirs. I would never, ever let that happen again because I'm free from that and uh, I'm free to be me and a direct reflection of God because if, if I'm born in his image, then you call me by my name. 
Well, your freedom, uh, your destiny is in your freedom. So, once again, these people, they see these things in you. I mean, they see stuff in you. And they see that you try to do things with your own power. And once again, if you can ever get connected to the power source, then you can rely on God to do things. And then you see the extraordinary uh, be manifested, completed, and they're all the above. And I'm going to speak from the book of life. You have to get to a point in your life where you don't give a damn what people say <laughs> or what people think or what they wish. We call it unapologetic. What they, you have to be who you are. Be unapologetic. You have to be fearless. You got to have faith of, uh, I mean, uh, just crazy. You got to have some crazy faith. And I promise you, I declare that my name is David. God will say access granted. And God will give you things that you would never, ever believe that you were able to accomplish, connect you with people that you were never, ever able to ever reach on your own. So you have to stop relying on your own power. Then you rely on God's power because God's power is much stronger than your power. And these people who want to be these holy rollers and send the LGBT community to uh, hell, when have you seen the hand of God? And you, and you know what? I, I just want to. No, that's, just, that's a question I want to ask these people. When have you seen the hand of God? And when have you seen God tell you to you have the authority to send somebody to a place that I don't believe that exists? And that's a whole nother topic. So we've never seen a heaven or a hell. So don't let people paint these pictures of God and these images of this uh, torment and this. All these. Don't let people do that. Study, research, read for yourself. Rely on your own intuition. Trust your gut because your gut will never lead you wrong. And just, you know, just just talk and just meditate on God, on God's word, and God will give you everything and all the desires of your heart. And the, and the crazy part about it, you know, we have all these religious domination, denominations uh, that, that, that either take a stance for affirming LGBTQ community or they won't affirm LGBTQ community. So you have the once oppressed, right? Mm-hmm. Now they have become the oppressor because all of these religions were offsprings of, and started for some particular reason that they rejected, that they weren't getting in an organization. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people hate organized religion. And uh, so these churches, you know, that don't champion the LGBTQ community, you should be sitting in there Sunday after Sunday pouring your time money into these organizations that are there established structures and institutions that d d suppress you and also would not acknowledge you. Well, that's a whole nother. We talking no, about we're talking about God. God. How you gonna ha how you gonna ever get access to God when you? are uh, being denied access to God, even in a sermon or even showing up and staying there, standing there with legal papers recognized by the state that you live in, that your marriage is valid, but you cannot get married at that church. Well, I don't even, I don't even have conversation with those people anymore. I don't waste my breath and it may sound mean. It may sound heartless or whatever, but I do not talk to individuals who identify as LGBT who attend churches who do not affirm them. I don't talk to them about anything <laughs> far as religion, period. If you want to live and shit them, and that's in the Bible. That's in, that's it's in the, the Bible. Bible. If you want to live there, place. You, it's a place in the Bible. <laughs> She's about to fall out of her chair. No, tent. no, it's a place in the Bible. You can stay and shit them your whole life. I do not care. I don't have time to try to pull you out because you have made your mind up. She's going to go look it up now. Yeah, I've I seen the, uh, the, the, the book. The scripture. The scripture and all the book, but I'm, I'm not going to waste my you. time and try to pull you out of something that you don't want to come out of. You, you like the abuse. They like it. They love it. So I don't have time. I got plenty of friends like that. They, 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 the, the family won't affirm it, the church won't affirm it, and I don't have time to try to pull you out because I affirm me, my church affirms me, my family affirms me. I don't have time. I don't, I don't bother with those people because those people, they live a miserable life, and I really feel sorry for them. I really do. And because they will never, ever reach their full potential because they rely on the validation of people and their churches and their families in order to have a complete life. I don't rely on anybody's validation. Validation is good. You need validation, but I don't rely on validation. I've been free. I'm free now. I'm, I'm, I'm not a slave no more. I don't have any chains on me. I am free. I am who I am, and I'm unapologetic, and I just don't deal with people like that because they will drain you spiritually and mentally and emotionally, and I don't have time for it, and they don't want to change. And so that's what I, that's, that's my take on those people. 